the one thing that I see when I look at case studies is of the companies that have them, most of the case studies are pretty crappy. They follow that format, problem, solution, results. It's very templatey. There's no storytelling. They're boring and often they're ineffective sales and marketing assets. The question would be, why do companies treat case studies with such, I don't know if the word is disdain, but they don't yeah. give them the love that they deserve. They spend so much time crafting guides and eBooks, but when it comes to case studies, it's almost like they're going through the motions. Why is that? There are many reasons for that. The first is accountability. No one really steps up to own this function because it crosses so many teams, sales, marketing, customer success. There's really no ownership typically of the strategy. There's no thought put towards how the, the, you're going to use these or even realization that these can be strategic assets. I think for a lot of marketers, they've been taught that template problem, solution, results, and, and that's all this is. I think also people tend to mail it in because they're hard. So they don't want to have to ask the customer because they're worried the customer will say no. So they try to just manufacture it internally. That's not a customer story. That's a you story. And you're missing some pretty critical narrative components in that their entire perspective and experience is absent. So now you've got a very cold clinical set of bullet points of here's what we did that, okay, the metrics might be impressive, but there's nothing compelling about that story. I think a lack of ownership, I think a lack of initiative to involve the customer. I think people backbench them because they're hard. I also think just a lack of imagination. For years, we've had people excited about and identifying because they are easier and because they're maybe easier to play around with. Oh, we could do ultimate guides. They had their heyday for a while. We could do infographics. We could do this really niche storytelling and brand journalism. And again, this case study asset just gets relegated to when you have time for it, mad rush to try and create it, no processes, no systems around it. So you get what you get and you don't get upset. And I think to break that starts by realizing there are so many different types of customer stories you can tell. There are disambiguator stories where you're talking about how your product or service can serve a really unique new markets. For example, there's a company that makes sexy topic, industrial air filtration. Prior to the pandemic, they had been doing cleaning particles out of factories and, and, and manufacturing environments. COVID hits, they realize we've got a medical grade solution for gyms and air filtration. They start telling stories with different language, with a different emphasis geared towards gyms, and they start cleaning up. You can have these disambiguous stories. You can have these stories about implementation, where it's just for so many software products or, or big initiatives, the implementation is the biggest hurdle. You can focus just on that going well. You can tell playbook style stories where it's here is the recipe and exactly how you can go replicate this outcome with our support. There are aspirational stories where it's less about what and more about who. So HubSpot does an amazing job of these with their startup stories where it's about an inspirational founder that people want to be like. And oh, by the way, if you want to be like them, HubSpot played a role in making that happen. I think it's a lack of imagination, ownership, and honestly, just bandwidth to make these what they could be. They're not on marketing's radar and they should be.